Hello everyone, I'm Grandmaster Dennis Borosh and today I'm going to show you a specialty that you rarely see and that is castling queenside. Let's take a look. So our topic of the day is Demora, which starts as e4, c5, d4, c takes, c3. It's the Mora gambit, why it sacrifices a pawn and gets good development for it. He takes c3, I take c3, knight c6. Ship c4, eyeing this pawn on f7. e6, knight f3, d6, queen e2, a6, trying to take away that square, bishop f4, eyeing the pawn, which is the usual target in the Mora, knight e7. And here comes the topic that we're going to talk about. But I do have to start from the beginning. So, famously, Pokimane had a lesson with none other than Anna Rudolph. Anna Rudolph was teaching the Mora Gambit, and she asked, which side should you castle in the Mora Gambit? And Pokimane gave the answer, queen side, because you're going for the attack. Now, the usual way of playing this position is to castle short. So most of the people do castle short. But that actually kind of inspired me and said, hey, let's take a look whether Pokimane actually is correct. And she is. Longcastle is playable. So therefore, welcome to the Pokimane variation. So this game actually featured Pokimane's original idea of castling long instead of short between Razuvayev and Beilin. Long castles, knight g6, bishop g3. So the idea, as Pokimane kind of alluded is the fact that you want to do opposite side castling. As you can tell, black is hard pressed to castle long and is more likely to castle short, but more about that later. So b5, bishop b3, d4, knight a4. Now oftentimes knight d5 is the right move, but because black chose the system with knight g6, knight c6, that is not a possibility have to go knight a4, and it'll be actually kind of useful, sheltering the white king. Bishop d7, king b1. And this is a very strong move, actually making sure the king doesn't end up being in danger. Knight a5, h4. A very good move. Once you actually sheltered your king in this long king side, queen side castling position, you want to make sure that you do the attack on the other side. And that is actually the classical opposite side castling situation. In this case, as we have already committed to castle on the queen side, we have a free hand on the other side to push pawns and attack. Notably, this bishop is going to press on f7 and e6. h5, knight g5. So white is preparing this idea of going f4, f5, and once he manages to pierce through, that is Razuvayev, the f7 pawn is going to fall, that is the weakest link. Bishop b5, queen e3, setting up this idea of knight b6, knight takes b3, a takes b3, takes, takes, queen a5. Now black's play was fairly logical so far, but has neglected one thing, and that is the king in the middle. So Razuvayev, instead of going where f4, f5 realizes, haha, you ain't going to go castle short no more, because I'm going to latch onto that target on f7, rook a7, rook c1, getting this rook in there, and now the attack is near unstoppable. So after queen a4, rook c8 showed up on the board. King e7 obviously is mate and one. And king d7 runs into the simple queen takes f7, takes Queen takes a7, and white has an overwhelming advantage. Therefore, black can safely resign. Notice that most of black pieces are still stuck on the 8th and the 6th, not doing too much at all. However, what should we do if actually black manages to castle? Let's take a look at that. Bishop g3, and instead of going b5, what if black goes bishop e7? Still, white definitely should play king b1. Make sure this king is safe. Queen c7, bishop b3. Just making sure there are no funny business on this line. And making sure that this bishop is saved. Also, it's safeguarding our king. So there's two moves here. 
One of them is castling and the other one is b5. Now b5 runs into this typical idea of rook c1 hitting this queen, which is in x-ray. If black would castle now, there is this very nice move of knight d5. He takes, bishop takes d5, pressing on those squares. The queen cannot move because you've got to defend this knight. Bishop d7, bishop c6, knight d4. And there's just too many pressure on that bishop. Black has to give it up. Queen e4, queen d7, knight f5. And here I am fairly confident that white has enough compensation as this knight is majestic on f5 and there is plenty of pressure on d6. So the other way of playing instead of b5 is of course castling. But it's not too hard to realize what white should be doing in this scenario. Of course, attack with the h-pawn h4. There are two couple of responses that black can do here. The main ones is knight e5 and h6. So let's take a look at knight e5. Knight e5 is trying to exchange pieces, but we're down a pawn, so we're not really that interested. So we go knight g5, going straight for the attack and preparing this f4, f5 idea that we've seen in the aforementioned game before. Knight a5, bishop c2, b5, f4, knight c4, e5. And now suddenly white gets a big attack on the king and h6 runs into this very nice little idea of queen e4. So black is in constant danger in these scenarios. But the other one, the other line is h6 and it seems like it stops the idea of white's. But not at all. White can still go knight g5, which is quite a strong move here. And it cannot really be captured because it opens up the h-file for the queen and rook. If bishop g5, there's bishop takes d6, hitting the queen and the rook. Queen a5 and rook h5 with big, big pressure on black's position. If the pawn is not taken, there is queen h5. And if you're just ignoring White now, it's mate in two. King f8, queen h8 check, and it's mate on h8. Therefore, the best choice that black can do is to ignore white's idea and go for knight a5. Ship c2, knight c4. Trying to go and get some counterattack. e5. Opening it up for the bishop pressing on those loose squares. If d5 here, white can go knight takes f7, and already there's a lot of pressure on g6. King f7 actually already runs into queen h5, and white is winning. Therefore, the best try is to take on e5, f4, knight takes b2, king takes b2, knight c4, king a1. And here, the crazy town starts. So black has to go d5, would love to play bishop f6 and attack this king, but just in the nick of time, the knight could show up to e4. So d5, bishop f2, bishop f6, queen d3. Defending and setting up made in one. Of course, taking is never an option in any case because it would open up this file. Also, this is a quite a stronger threat. Rook d8, queen h7 check, king f8, Rook h3, involving all the pieces and also keeping the tension on that king. Now comes knight a3, knight e4, not caring much about that bishop. Knight takes c2, king b2. Now, the first question would be, why isn't there d takes e4? But it turns out it's losing on the spot because there's queen h8 here, bishop c5 check. Queen takes c5 and queen takes d8, checkmate. Therefore, black has to go d4 here, knight takes f6. d takes c3 runs into rook takes c3, and black has to deal with too many threats. So black has to go knight e3, knight e3, rook takes c3, d takes c3, bishop takes c3. Again, rook takes d1 has to be played, check. King e7, check, king d7, 
Queen takes g7, ignoring the rook and saying, hey, your king is in trouble. Queen d6, a knight. And queen takes f7, king c6, knight takes d1, white has the advantage. Because taking is actually taboo. Knight e7 check, king c7, knight d5 check, king c6, queen c7 check. If you go king b5, then you lose to queen c5, king a4, and knight c3 checkmate. And if you take here, there's queen d8, and at the end of the day, the d1 queen is falling. So this is the famous and exciting Pokemane variation. I really hope you enjoyed this lesson, and I hope you'll try your luck and castle queenside next time with the Mora Gambit. Thank you so much for watching, and if you have any thoughts, ideas, please leave a comment below. With that, I'm signing off. Take care.